Today I have a much requested, much anticipated video for you. It's a tutorial on how to create a bottom sheet in native script. And we're gonna do this without any third party libraries. That's coming up in this video. Hey native scripters, this is Alex from nativescripting.com. Check out the link below to nativescripting.com where you'll find intermediate and advanced courses on native script and take your native script skills to the next level. And if this is your first time here and you wanna see more native script tips, tricks, and tutorials, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the little bell button so you don't miss anything. All right, so among the many folks that have asked me to do the bottom sheet, here's one. Vinay asks, how to create a bottom sheet that can slide up and down? So similar to how Google uses the bottom sheet in Google Maps to reveal more information. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be using multiple frames to accomplish this task. It's going to give us a reusable bottom sheet that can animate up and down, and it can be used on multiple pages. Now, I'm going to build on the multiple frames tutorial that I've recently published here, as well as the custom events tutorial. If you find yourself here and you haven't seen those two videos, I suggest watching those before you watch this one. That way, you know how to set everything up. The links to those videos are in the description below and also in the cards up above. Using multiple frames is just one of many ways to get the bottom sheet thing done. But in my humble opinion, it's the most flexible, reusable and maintainable way. So that's why I'm sharing this method with you today. If you've implemented a bottom sheet in NativeScript before, let me know down in the comments and tell me how you did it. All right, you ready? Let's do this. Here we're gonna combine a couple of techniques we've already talked about. And I'm gonna start off with a demonstration that I've already set up in the videos about multiple frames. So here's the example, we have iOS and Android here. On this top frame right here, I can navigate that separately. And that has a whole separate frame that I can navigate between page one and page two. And this bottom frame is always static and it's always here. If I click on tap me, you get this alert. And of course, the same thing on Android. So this is gonna be where we're gonna start because we're gonna use a similar technique for the bottom sheet. And I recommend keeping the bottom sheet as a separate frame. Now, there are many ways to do it, of course. You don't have to use separate frames, but I feel like having a separate frame for the bottom sheet actually makes a lot of sense because you can keep your UI separate and you can reuse those bits in other parts of the application. So if you haven't seen the video on how I set this up with multiple frames, make sure you check that out so you're caught up. So here's mainpage.xml and we have two frames on this page in a grid layout. The frame at the top right here lists the home page as the default page. That's this one at the top here that says page one with the button and the frame on the bottom is our action frame. So we're gonna reuse the action frame as a bottom sheet. But first we need to have a button on the top frame on the top page, I should say, that's going to trigger the opening of the bottom sheet. So here is the frame at the top and we're loading home page inside that frame. So let's look at homepage.xml and here is our label and a button. And we're going to add another button here that says show. So button and the text will say show. And that's because we want to show the bottom sheet and we need a tap handler here. That's going to say, I'm going to call button show tap. So this tap handler needs to be implemented in the code behind for the home page. That's right here, homepage.ts. So I'm going to export a function called button show tap. It's going to have args of type event data. And here we want to show bottom sheet. But how do we do that? We don't know yet. We'll come back here in a minute. So we need to figure out what technique we're going to use to show that bottom frame. Well, what's a good way to call the bottom frame to animate up from a whole different frame, from a separate frame? So homepage.xml lives inside of this frame, the top frame, and the bottom frame is what we're trying to slide up. So we need to talk from one frame to another frame. And the way to do that is by using custom events. And I have another video on custom events. If you haven't seen that, check that out. I'll link to it down in the description and up in the cards. All right, so here, when we load this bottom frame, we call this load handler called action frame loaded. Let's go to mainpage.ts. There it is, it's defined here. This also defines how far down we translate that frame. So because we wanna keep it completely off 
of the screen to the bottom of the screen, all we need to do is just set the translate Y position to the screen's dimensions, the height dimension. So I'm going to keep that line there and I'm going to delete everything else. We want to do the same thing for iOS and Android, so we don't need to split it up by platform. So if I save this right now and we take a look, you will see that now all we see here is the top frame. We can navigate it, but the bottom frame is actually down below the screen, so we don't see it. So we need to somehow slide it up when that button is tapped. By the way, I didn't save homepage.xml yet. That's why that button is not visible. I'm going to save that, and you'll see that we have this new show button, which doesn't do anything right now. So let's go back to main page .ts, And here I'm going to register a custom event. And I'm going to use the topmost frame, the root frame to register that event. And how do we get a hold of the root frame? Well, it's not this frame. This frame is the local frame. We want to use the root frame, which comes from the frame module. So I'm going to change the wording here. I'm going to cut this out and paste it here. And instead of just importing frame, I'm going to import star as frame module from TNS core modules UI frame. So now we got the whole module. So now this frame right here can be renamed to frame module dot frame. And we need to use frame module dot topmost. This will give us the very root frame. And if you've seen my videos before regarding this, if you've seen the multiple frame video, then you know that a frame is actually a view and a view is an observable and an observable has an on function. This is kind of like the way jQuery works, where you can register a custom event and then trigger it. So we'll see that in a minute. So when we call on, we have to provide an event. There are some events already that are specified in native script, but we can create our own custom events too. So I'm going to create an event called show bottom sheet. Now, of course, if you're using a real application, you would probably want to keep this as some kind of constant string somewhere else, not here. But for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to put it right here. And the handler for this is going to be defined right here, which is going to take arg but we don't need that really. So I'm not going to define the parameter to the handler. So when this event is triggered, we want to do something and we want to actually slide the current frame, which is the action frame. That's the bottom sheet. And we have a reference to it right here. So we want to animate it frame dot animate. And I want to animate it up. Let's give it a duration. I'm going to give it 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. And I want to do translate on it. And in X direction, it's going to go zero. But in Y direction, it's going to go to 300. So remember, initially, when this frame is loaded, we're translating it down all the way down below the screen height. So this could be, I don't know, maybe like 600, maybe 800, depending on your screen height. And then I want to move it back up to just the height of 300. You know what? Actually, I'm going to move it higher up. So let's go with, I don't know, um, 200. And then I'm going to give it an animation curve. Now here you can do things like linear and ease in and ease out. But I like to be a little bit more precise with my animation curves. In fact, I use this tool called cubicbezier.com. I've shown this tool before. And for this particular one, I want to use a curve kind of like this one where it eases in and then and then becomes really fast and then slows down towards the end. If I press go here, you'll see this pink box move. And that's how I want my bottom sheet to open up. So I'm going to copy this value right from the URL. And here I'm going to specify the curve as new cubic Bezier animation curve and give it those values. This 0.99 at the end, I can just change to one. It's about the same. You can see that cubic Bezier animation curve got imported from TNS core modules UI animation. And that's it. So that'll show the bottom sheet. Now, how do we actually trigger this event, this custom event? Let's go back to our home page right here where we tap the button that says show. I'm going to use the frame module again, which we've already imported here, but I'm going to rename it to frame module. And I'm going to say frame module topmost. So we want to trigger that event on the topmost frame. That's the frame that's going to host our event. And there is no trigger in native script, but there is a notify. So notify is the function we want to use. Notify takes in an event data type. So here we need to pass in an object that has two properties on it. If I press control space here, you'll see what properties it has. Event name and object. Event name is the same event that we want to pass in. And that's called show bottom sheet. I'm going to copy that and paste that in here. An object can really be anything, but it has to be an observable. So I'm just going to pass in the button itself, the button that was tapped. 
if you want to pass in custom properties here you can just create your own observable inherit from observable create properties that you want on it and pass that in as an object but i'm just going to pass through that button okay so let's save everything and take a look i'm going to click show and the bottom sheet slides up and let's do that on Android as well. There we go. And that looks pretty good. I like that animation where it slows down a little bit at the end. All right, so now I wanna convert this tap me button. Instead of doing an alert, I wanna actually have it close the bottom sheet. Now you can also add a gesture, of course, so you can slide that down and it'll close the bottom sheet as well, but uh, I'm not gonna implement the gesture. You can see my other video on gestures and so doing something very similar where I show the Twitter custom top bar being animated and that's where we handle gestures. Here, I'm just going to use this tap me button that's already here. And the tap me button is actually on the action page. So there's action page. There's that button. We already have a tap me tap handler here, which has an alert that it sends. So instead of the alert, I'm going to do something else here. And you probably can guess what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the frame module again. So actually, I'm just going to copy this right here. Import star as frame module. So I'm going to paste this at the top of the action page of code behind. And here I'm going to say frame module topmost. I'm going to notify. And in this case, I'm going to create a new event called hide bottom sheet. So you want to probably keep all these event names in one place in your production applications. Oh, that should actually be an object. I always get that confused. So notify takes an object and it has to have an event name. That's going to be hide bottom sheet. And then the object itself that we're going to pass in is going to be here. I can pass in null because we don't really care about it, but I'm actually going to specify event data here that gets auto imported. Then I'm going to pass in args.object. Okay. So now we need to handle this hide bottom sheet event. Where are we going to do that? Well, we're going to head back to main page. And this is where we registered the show bottom sheet. So I'm going to copy this, paste it down here, and I'm going to register a new one called hide bottom sheet. It's going to be another animation. Duration 1000 is fine. X is going to be zero. And Y, we want it to slide back down, all the way down below the screen. So that's going to be this value right here, the screen height. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. I'm fine with the curve being the same as well. Let's save this and check it out. All right, I'm going to tap show show and that's going to slide up and when I hit tap me it's going to slide back down when I hit show on Android slide up and tap me slides down very nice very nice but how can we make this a little bit better well I mean this might be just all you need but on iOS there are some really neat apps where the page in the background just kind of shrinks a little bit while the bottom sheet slides up and I want to have that same effect here so because we're talking about the top frame and we're changing the scale of it, we're going to need to also create a top frame loaded event here. So I'm going to go to mainpage.xml and I'm going to add a loaded event here and it's going to say, oh, let's call it page frame loaded. These names are not that great, but hopefully you get the idea. So the top frame is the page frame. That's the one that we're navigating from page to page. So I'm going to call that page from loaded. Let's go to the code behind and I'm going to here export a new function called page frame loaded. Args is going to be event data type. And I'm also going to get a hold of the frame here. So I'm going to copy this line and paste it here. That's going to be the top frame now. And what do we want to do here? So our goal is to use the frame model module again and we want to register another event handler this time acting on different frame but this will show you another technique so here you can have multiple event handlers for the same event so we're going to go to the topmost frame and we're going to sign up for the same event show bottom sheet so on show bottom sheet i'm going to provide this new handler here and i'm going to now act on this frame so frame this is the page frame by the way first of all i want to set its border radius and the border radius i'm just going to do 10 here so that it shows rounded corners and then frame animate Let's do a little animation here over a duration of one second. So 1000 milliseconds here. And here I'm going to scale it just a tiny little bit. So X is going to be 0.95 and Y is going to be 0.95 as well. Nope, not 95, 0.95. 
And let's also fade it out a little bit. So I'm going to give it an opacity of 0.6. And I'm just going to copy this animation curve so that it uses the same curve. Okay, so that's when we show the bottom sheet. But when we hide the bottom sheet, we want to reverse this animation. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here. So we're going to call frame animate. And we're going to scale this back to size 1 for X and Y and opacity of 1. But the frame border radius, I'm not going to do that here. I'm actually going to wait for the animation to complete and use its then handler here. And here's where I'm going to set the border radius back to zero. Let's put that in parens. Okay, there's one more thing I want to do. And that's in main page.xml. I want to have the background of my entire page black so that it looks like the top frame is actually fading into darkness when we bring up the bottom sheet. So I'm going to just do this in line here. I'm going to set the background color to be black. Let's save this and let's check it out. I'm going to press show here and we animate up. And I think I forgot to, ah, yes. So here, frame.topmost.on, hide bottom sheet. This is what I wanted to handle. This is a different event. So let's make sure we handle the right event there. And now let's go take a look. So I'm going to press show on iOS. You can see the little animation on the top frame where it scales down just a little bit. We get the rounded corners and it, it seems to fade out a little bit into black. Kind of uh, an effect you would have if you were using the iOS podcasts app, for example. And then if I hit tap me again, the bottom sheet slides down. The main page comes back up to the right scale. And we can do that indefinitely. So that's pretty cool animation. With Android, you get Get a similar animation we don't get the rounded corners there just because you can't put a border radius on a frame but you could do that on a page if you really wanted to so you can try that out yourself but we do still get that nice animation where we scale down for the frame and if i hit tap me again we scale back up I've got a ton of other tutorials planned coming out in the next weeks and months. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, especially if you like this video. And don't forget to click on the little bell so you don't miss any of those. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there, where you'll find me tweeting random stuff about native script, JavaScript, Angular, Vue, and so on. That's all for today, folks. And I will see you next time. Bye.